What is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode. Today what we do is we actually create a, um, a simple save mechanic as you can tell. Now we have a number at the bottom right here. That is of course our high score. So really simple stuff we do. We also polish uh, a little bit of the menu at the end. You'll see it. But um, what else? Oh yeah, we changed the floor. We added a, uh, some lines to the shader. <laughs> I forgot to do that earlier, but we added some lines to the shader so our floor can actually have a set color. So if we just grab our floor from the scene, where is our floor? We have this right here, the, uh, the color property, which we can use to actually change the floor color. So that's gonna help you do a better contrast with our current lighting setup. And that's actually what we do. We also added like a little animation right here at the end. Guys, that is what we're going to be doing today. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so very quick episode today. We're going to be saving the previous high score. Now, before we go any further, I'd like to say, um, we're going to be saving this locally. So, on our machine, on our computer, on our device, on our mobile phone. If we ever want to go outside and save it, say, on the cloud, on Google Cloud, we will be doing that um, later on, not right now though, because right now we're just saving a local high score. So if you change in between devices, your high score is obviously not going to be the same. If you ever save to your Google Play device and then you, you log on your, um, your Google address, or sorry, email on another device, then it's going to sync, it's going to be, the, you know, your local score is going to be out there. But today we don't do that, today we wrap up everything local before we move on to part number two of Subway Surfer where we'll be doing achievement, leaderboard and all those connectivity things. So last time we left we had this kind of menu going on, we had one bug I wanted to fix that I didn't fix in last episode. This thing over here, I'd like it to go away. So we're gonna tell the, um, we're gonna tell the game menu, so that thing over here at the very top left, to go away when we get this message. And also, let's play with our font, because right here, they're kind of blurry and it's not really good looking. So, first off, the dev function, it is inside of the um, game manager. Let's open this one up, and where is it that we die? On dev is right here, we're going to be saying game canvas set trigger hide. So that's the only line of code we needed here. I actually saved this real quick, compile, let's try it out. Because if you remember, um, we already had this going on. So as you can tell, we had the nice little fade out at the top left. Now we have only this. Yeah, the scaling really doesn't look good. <laughs> but we're going to be fixing that. Um, let's get right into the second part of this tutorial, which was to save the data. Now, we're going to go back exactly at the same spot on the onDef function. And we're going to be checking. So check if this is a high score. The way we do this is going to be by using the score. So we have the score right here. If the score is bigger than player pref, gets, get, uh, let's do a get in, and we can call this one high score. I actually don't know how to type that properly. Let me Google real quick. Okay, HIS score, that's actually how you write it. Amazing, okay. So if our score is bigger than that, then we're gonna go ahead and overwrite it. So player pref, set int, and we save high score. Now, quick introduction, if you haven't um, ever used that before, the player pref is basically something you save in your registry, and it that just, that's just what it is. So all your data about this game is going to be saved in your registry. Now score is actually a float, so we're going to cast it as a int right before. Quick little explanation. If we go under reg edit, this is something you shouldn't really do, but I mean, just tag along, look at it, don't modify anything in your edge reg edit. If you're on Windows, type in reg edit right here. You can open it up. And once you're in here, start using your arrow keys a bit and navigate to current user. You're going to see software, then find Unity or Unity Technology. Um, which one is it? I think it's actually Unity, and under it you should find your company name, which in my case is in 3K. Or if you haven't set any, yours would be a default company. Now, you have a, um, an actual folder called Subway Skater. You you're going to have a folder for every single game you're making. This is where it's going to be safe, right in here. By default, you always have these one. You have the cloud user ID, your you know things that Unity uses, but you also have the set pref and also get pref. 
sorry, the player preference in general. <laughs> Let's go ahead and show what I mean by playing this game with this new snippet of code. We're going to crash. Actually, let's have a score of 1, that's fine. That is a high score, it's 4. Now if I go here and I refresh this by just clicking off and back on, you're going to see we have uh, something called high score, and the value is actually 3. It should be 4. Hmm. We're going to go down here and say int s is equal to score. Now we're going to do if, um, if s modulo 1 is equal equal to zero, then we leave it like that, that's fine, else we do s plus one. s plus equal one. And here we go, cast this as a, oh, we can't cast this as in, this is going to be a float. And then we're going to save s, which is also a float, but this one we can cast it. That's a really weird snippet of code. Now I just look at it. But it's going to do what we want, it's going to be saving the proper amount inside of our regedit. Right. So having this done, um, we need to, I'd like to actually show this somewhere, show this uh, data at the beginning of the game when we are looking at the menu screen. So anywhere in here could do it. Um, I was thinking about bottom left. So what if we head over to the canvas, the menu itself, we create a new, say this one is going to be a new text, anchor at bottom left. Um, position, I'm not sure. Let's just put some, some text in there first. We're going to say like 1 and 5. Position could be minus 20 um, and then 20. Minus 20, 20 is good. I'm going to bump up the width in case we have a crazy score, so maybe 300 or 200. The height could be 60, so we can have it big. I'm going to anchor it as the alignment, the paragraph alignment, bottom right, just like this. Go ahead and change the font to our new font. And that's going to be where the score is. In case you don't see it anymore, that's because your height is not big enough. So you can increase that to say 90. You can play around with this as much as you want. And display the score right here. I like the color black here because it fits well with the background. So I'm going to be keeping that. And um, yeah, just put anything in here you want. It's going to be replaced when we start the game. Talking about being replaced when we start a game, let's type in high score at the top here, and we are going to, um, let's go ahead and go under the game manager once more, and at the top we're going to create a public text, we already have a couple of texts right here, let's just tag along, high score text. Grab this one, and at the awake, we are going to say high score te text dot text is going to be equal to player pref get int and that int is going to be high score so this is how we fetch the value <laughs> anyway this is a string and we're saying that string is going to be equal to int of course we can't do that so do a two string at the end now if we actually boot the game it should say three because our previous high score is three it doesn't say anything because of course we forgot to put it in the field right here. So I score text right there. Sorry if I'm going a little bit too fast, but these are you know these are all obvious stuff we've done in the past. And let's try and beat our score, which shouldn't be that hard. We now have 15. Play again, the score is 15. Alright, so just like I mentioned a second ago, I'd like to actually take this and actually um well, the menu, def menu at the end, I'd like to actually make it a little bit better. It doesn't look that great right now because of the size of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under the def menu, find out that menu itself. What I've done earlier is that I've scaled the, the font, and that is something stupid to do. You don't want to be scaling the font. You want to be using the font size instead. So here's what we'll be doing. Put every everything on the one, and then we're going to scale the font size. So height has to change as well, maybe 200 by 200. And see how much clearer this is? This is a lot clearer. Maybe even put it here. So I'm going to remember um, this font size. So it's 150, but I'm going to copy the score because we're about to shut down the game and now every value we set has been reset. So let's go under score, paste, and the font size was 150. And here we go, we just fix that. Let's do the same exact thing for the amount of coins. So I'm going to do it manually here. 
it's fine we can bump up the size we need to bump up the height first and that will do it the play button a little bit too big for me let's do 90 by 30 oh that's maybe something like that and you know what we're gonna be fancy right now we're just uh we're pretty much done with the whole first part of the game now I'm gonna go on a freestyling where I just do a little bit of polishing this icon right here I'd like it to you know um move a little bit to like make the player click on it or something uh, grab the player's attention is what I meant I'm going to create an animator on it and freestyle a little bit create a new uh, animation controller that's the play button at the end let's click on it again control 6 bring up this animation window create play button um, I'm going to call it breathe that's a good animation we're gonna make our play button breathe I'm going to hit record and make sure I pump up the width to um, so what's the ratio here we could do we can play around with the scale it's not gonna be that bad Yeah, so let's play around with the scale. I'll put everything on, say, 111. Is that, that's probably too small, is it? Or that could be perfect, actually. After one second, it is going, actually, after one second 30, it is going to grow to 1.5, and then go back to one, just like this. Let's open up the curve and actually break these properly. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to zoom in on this thing. It feels like it changed it so much. Um, well, what I'm going to do is right click on this thing at the very end. Make sure this is a free. And this one is also free. Okay, so something like this is going to work. Now I'm going to stop and uh, try to play this. As you can tell in this window on the right side, it actually goes up and down. So it might in like it might help the player click on it. Once you click on it, we go back to the actual game. So that's gonna be the flow. That's actually where we are going to pretty much close the very first um, part of the Subway Surfer tutorial. Now, what I'd like to do in the next episode for the the final episode of the very first section is we're going to be publishing this on the Asset Store and actually, you know, having this out there. Also, one thing I did not mention is that I've added something to my um, my floor shader. As you can tell, my floor actually has a proper color, which it did not have before. So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to open up that script, show it to you, and you can copy over the three or four lines I've changed. Um, basically, in my Ben World shader, I've added this color parameter over here. By doing this, we are going to have a color property down here on the right-hand side. And then what I've done is I've actually used that color a little bit later on so you declare it down here and it fix 4 and then when we do our surface shader I do 8 times color at the end which means we can multiply by the color and have a proper uh, blend in between the actual texture and then the color so that's the the texture is the atlas and the color is the one we set in the shader so I've only set this for my floor as you can tell it's not modifying anything but we needed to have something else uh, that contrasts really good with the item so I decided to change my floor color it is actually on 7F9192 so guys that is actually where we're going to be ending this video right here but of course tune in in the next one we're going to be publishing this to our Google Play account so that will be a very nice experience if you've never done it before be aware that if you publish on Google Play you're going to have to pay a initial fee which is really not that expensive let me google it for you real quick so uh, it is actually $25 it is a one-time fee so once you pay it you can publish as many games as you want you can monetize on those games nobody really cares at that point but they do ask um, for you to become a Google developer which is 25 bucks initially of course that is in USD dollar so guys thank you so much for watching click the video on the screen right now we're gonna go ahead and publish this and um, check out the link in the description support us on patreon if you can and that's pretty much it, so I will be catching you in the next one. Cheers!